Alright, in this video, I'm going to be giving you a repair overview of a Microsoft Xbox 360 gaming console. Now, I actually got this off eBay for only about $8, and it included all the accessories needed to use the console. It even included a spare controller and a hard disk. So yeah, I figured that was a pretty good deal. Um, when I got this Xbox, it was, of course, non-functional. It had the... Uh, common red ring of death error. Now, the reason that happens is because the GPU, which is located under this rather small heatsink, actually gets too hot and has a BGA failure. Just like the 2007 MacBook Pro and the 2006 MacBook Pro that I repaired in some previous videos. Now, it's not exactly the same as the 2007 as the chip itself is fine. It's just, uh, poor quality solder and the chip just gets way too hot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to explain how to prevent that. So if you have an original Xbox 360 console, uh, this is an original Xbox 360. Um, uh, it's known as the Xenon revision of the Xbox 360 and it came out in about 2005. Now this particular model was made in about 2006 as you can see on the um, manufacturing date sticker there. Um, but the uh, this model itself was originally released in 2005. Now if you have an original 2005 model, it will have a very crappy heatsink right here. It'll have the original just aluminum block style heatsink right here. Now that heatsink is extremely bad. It's not anywhere near sufficient enough to cool off the GPU chip under under this heatsink. Um, so if you have that model heatsink, you will need to buy uh, this model heatsink, which is known as the extended heatsink, uh, off eBay. They're really cheap, probably about five or six dollars. Just pick one up if your console still works, um, and you are still running it with the original heatsink. Now. The steps I'm going to go over in this video are mainly for people who have a functional console because I'm not going to do any reflowing or reflowing overviews in this video. But um, if your console still works and you haven't really had any problems, I would definitely recommend opening it up and performing these steps. So the first, the main step you're going to need to do is get a new heatsink. If you do nothing else, get a new heatsink. Also, do not do the X-clamp modifications that a lot of people do on these systems. The X-clamps are there for a reason. They put the proper pressure on the GPU and CPU chip and hold the heat sinks on properly. There is no need to replace those with some crappy screws because that'll just put a ton of extra stress on the board and just lead to further problems down the road. So do not uh, install any X-clamp modifications because they do absolutely nothing except harm the console further. So the, first, the second thing I would highly recommend doing, especially if you take off any heat sinks, is to replace the thermal compound. Now the stock thermal compound on these consoles is, as the GPU heat sink, is extremely poor quality. So I would highly recommend taking the heat sinks off and replacing the thermal compound with Arctic Silver 5 thermal compound. Now in my experience, the thermal compound on the chips and the heat sinks is extremely hard to remove. So I would recommend using some 91% rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips or cotton swabs, whatever you prefer to call them. And just taking them, you're going to need to use some pressure and just rub off as much of the thermal compound as you can. I realize it is extremely hard to remove. If you can't remove it all, at least remove the stuff off the chips and where the chips contact on the heat sinks. So, yeah. So, once you've replaced this heat sink with the extended heat sink as I have here, you will need to add a fan to it. Now, not adding a fan to it will, s with this heat sink, not adding a fan to it will improve the cooling a little bit. However, adding a fan greatly improves the cooling and after doing so you are 
basically 100% guaranteed to not have any Red Ring of Death problems in the future. Because this fan alone keeps this GPU so cool, even when playing games, that you almost don't even need this fan shroud to pull air off it. It's, it runs that cool with a fan. So, to add a fan, um, in my case, I just took a fan off an old graphics card I never used, and I don't even think the graphics card worked. So yeah, I just used that fan spare. Um, I attached it to the heatsink with actually some fishing line. Now, while I would not recommend doing that, if you have nothing else, uh, it works just fine. As you can see, the fan doesn't move around at all. Um, it's properly secured, and it doesn't rattle, rattle when it's on. However, another way you can do it is you can actually take this ring of light board off, drill some holes through this piece of metal here, and then screw on like a fan that has a border around it to uh, this area, and it'll work just fine. Now, to provide power to the fan, um, I actually tapped into the main 12-volt uh, DC input of the power supply. Um, there are about six contacts on the bottom of this board where that uh, the plug attaches. Um, I will uh, post a picture in the video of the proper solder points you'll need to connect the fan to. And basically you just solder it in. It's really easy. Um, there is a hole in the logic board as you can see where you can stick the wires through. And it actually works quite well and it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, definitely install a fan if you at all possibly can. Because without a fan, you will probably get the Red Ring of Death, even with this heatsink. But with a fan, I'm almost certain that you will not get the Red Ring of Death. Now, if you're really feeling, if you have some extra fans around that are the right size, you should put one in front of this heatsink. This heatsink does get hot, however, it doesn't get hot enough to cause any problems with the CPU chip that's under it. Uh, just go ahead and put a fan here and solder it in to uh, the main solder connection that you use for your GPU fan and it'll work just fine. So um, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and reassemble the console enough, uh, basically just put the DVD drive in and go ahead and power it up and just show you how it runs with this new fan. So yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see I have uh, put the DVD drive in. Uh, you don't actually screw it in in this part of the uh, reassembly process but uh, yeah it's just sitting on there and plugged into the SATA and power cable as you can see right there now the DVD drive is actually necessary for proper cooling um, it does channel the air over the GPU heatsink and does actually improve the cooling a little bit so yeah I definitely recommend uh, installing this before running the console so let me go ahead and power it up As you can see, the fan immediately starts spinning, and the console is booting up. So as you can see, the console has started up and is working just fine. Um, I have repaired this, as I said before. It did have the Red Ring of Death, and I have played some pretty intensive games on here and it hasn't had a single problem whatsoever. So that is the repair overview and Red Ring of Death prevention steps needed on a, or in this case an original, Microsoft Xbox 360 console. Hope you enjoyed this video.